Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tequila Talks. Your friend Tequila Bay with you tonight. And tonight we do this episode from the comfort of my home. And as we can see, there is a lot of tequila and a lot of tequila decorations and tequila inspiration here at my house. Um, and the intention of tonight's Tequila Talks is to go ahead and dive into a conversation about the ultra luxury or the high end tequila drinking experience. Behind me, we showcase and I showcase a lot of special bottles. We have the Gran Patron Burdeos, which is a Bordeaux wine cask finished Añejo Tequila from Tequila Patron. Uh, we also, here at my house, have the Casa Dragones Joven Tequila, which is a blended uh, Añejo en Blanco expression. And it is a tequila that is made by Berta Gonzalez, which is the uh, first ever master distiller, Maestra Tequilera in Mexico, which uh, I think that's a very unique um, characteristic of the brand. We also, behind me, uh, and we've already featured it a few times, but the Patron and La Ligue Series 2. I kind of store this tequila full time here at my house. I still have yet to open it. Um, and I think I'm holding off on opening it. It's a, it's a collector's item. But whenever I need to showcase it at my restaurant or we need to use it as a talking point or a prop, we carefully move it around, but it stays full time here at my house. We also have a little bit of Don Julio 42. We have the Don Julio Primavera, which was a limited edition Reposado tequila that was launched last summer. And uh, as you can tell, most of these tequila bottles are either empty or they're almost empty because I do a lot of tequila drinking here at my house. Or when I have friends over, we do a nice tasting and we get to enjoy all these great tequilas. And you know, after a long day at uh, El Patron, selling tequila, selling tacos, talking about Mexican food and dealing with guests, dealing with my staff, I have to come home and I have to be comfortable and I have to enjoy a great glass of tequila. Um, but, you know, in other episodes, we've talked about the importance of drinking the Blanco Expressions and how I do really enjoy and I prefer the traditional Agave Forward experience and expression like that of the Siete Leguas or like that of Los Abuelos, which are my favorite in terms of that small batch traditional artisanal tequila. But again, here at my house, when I have friends over, I do kind of want to show off a little bit and showcase these really high-end expressions. So tonight, we're actually going to kick into the conversation of one of the most popular tequilas and the luxury tequilas, which is Tequila Clase Azul. There's a lot of mixed energy and a lot of mixed reviews about, is it a good tequila? Is it a bad tequila? A lot of people love this tequila, which I think the people that really, really love it or think that it's a great expression of tequila are more of the novice drinkers that aren't really used to those agave forward traditional expressions of tequila. So the conversation tonight is gonna to be focused solely around this very unique and special brand of ultra luxury premium tequila. So let's go ahead and get started. Glace Azul is made at Casa Tradicion Distillery, which is given NOM 1595. Here at this distillery by Tequila Matchmaker, it is rated as the number 12 best distillery in Mexico, and it is in the town of San Agustin, Jalisco. This distillery does not allow for private labels, and it only, other, uh, it only makes two other expressions of tequila. Now, a fun fact about Clase Azul is that it is yet to be confirmed additive free by Tequila Matchmaker, which opens up a really unique conversation. I think we've touched, uh, we've touched on the topic quite often, and I think it's the most popular topic here uh, with all of our new tequila drinkers or tequila connoisseurs, tequila aficionados, and it's the topic of additives or abocantes. So I think in the English expression, the additive sounds foreign, it sounds kind of invasive and intrusive, but legally the CRT, Consejo Regulador de Tequila, allows for the use of abocantes, which are mellowing agents. Now these mellowing agents are glycerins or colorings, vanillas, sweeteners, or the oak agents that can enhance the characteristics of the tequila. 
Now that we're making such high volume and mass producing tequilas, some distilleries are using the, uh, the abocantes to again kind of round out their experience and mellow out their tequilas and, and drive a little bit more consistency in their process. So this is where for a, a, a drinker that prefers that small batch, attention to detail, time-honored tequila, that's where the conversation of abocantes is really sensitive. But in all reality, the Consejo Regulador Tequila allows for the use of abocantes with no more than 1% of the total volume of the production of tequila. So really these abocantes shouldn't be as invasive as we think. Now, also abocantes are only legally allowed to be used in the Reposado or the Añejo tequilas and are not allowed to be used in Blanco expressions. So for me, I prefer, and I am a definitely a traditionalist drinker of tequila where I prefer that time-honored agave forward expression, but when it comes to the abocantes or the additives, I think I have a very open mind and I really enjoy the different expressions and the different um, interpretations of the use of abocantes to really drive and enhance a very special experience of tequila, which I think in, in, in the conversation of tonight, Tequila Clase Sul, although it is uh, not confirmed that they're additive free, and also the distilleries aren't legally uh, forced to disclose whether they do use abocantes or not, um, I think it is our best guess that Tequila Clase Sul might have an influence or has the influence of abocantes just due to the nature of their flavors, their very vanilla forward, caramel forward expressions. And um, for me, I like to classify them more of like a dessert tequila, which as to why and how they're so sweet. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the process of what Clase Azul and how they execute their tequila production. The Jima, which is the very first step of the process, the uh, Jima is carried out after six to eight years of maturation of the Blue Weber Agave. Tequila Clase Azul also uses uh, only organic non-GMO agaves, which is part of their branding as this ultra premium luxury line of tequila. And these agaves are then, when we talk about the next step, which is the cooking of the agave, these agaves are cooked in stone and brick ovens for about, on average, 72 hours. So they do use a slow cooking traditionalist method in the brick and stone oven. But moving into the, the milling process, they use the roller mill extraction, which is a more industrial method of milling and a more efficient method of milling. But again, a lot of our tried and true tequila drinkers want to drink a tequila that has that Tahona style ancestral time honored execution. Moving forward, the uh, formulation and the fermentation of the tequila, Tequila Clase Azul uses a proprietary yeast to ferment their tequila and they ferment in stainless steel tanks to which then after fermentation the mosto is then distilled twice distilled in copper pot stills and again the final phase of the tequila production process which is the bottling sees an unaged blanco expression to then which multiple varieties and multiple uh, executions of aging are then used to create the reposado or the tequila añejo or the ultra, the uh, clase sur ultra or the extra añejo, which I unfortunately haven't been able to get my hands on. It's also very pricey. But uh, then now we also tonight are showcasing some of the mezcales. So let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper into the portfolio and the products that Tequila Clase Azul has to offer. First here to my left, we have again the Blanco Expression, which is an unaged tequila. Uh, moving into the Reposado here to my right, the Reposado is aged for eight months in American Whiskey Oak. We have the Añejo Tequila here to my left, which is a 25 month American Whiskey Oak aged tequila. The Ultra, which again, we don't have here and it's not part of my collection soon, I hope it becomes part of my collection. The uh, Ultra Tequila, which is the Extrañejo, is a five year American whiskey aged tequila, which is then finished in Spanish sherry barrels. The sherry barrel, if you're not familiar with what a sherry barrel is, sherry wine uh, made in Spain, 
uh, offers a little bit more of that tannic component, some of those sweeter notes of wine and definitely enhances that like mouthfeel and tannic experience. Here to my right, we have the Glace Azul Joven, which is the blended tequila. So let's revisit what a Joven tequila is. Joven Oro, which is a uh, class of tequila. Uh, excuse me, a category of tequila. The Joven Oro is the blended expression. So this one in particular is a Blanco expression, which is then blended with a unique batch of eight month uh, French oak reposado, and also blended with a seven year uh, American whiskey extrañejo tequila, which again is then finished with that Spanish sherry aged uh, barrel. And uh, as well here, I'm part of my collection, I have the Clase Azul Durango and the Clase Azul Guerrero. These two on the end are the mezcal, which the mezcal or mezcal de tequila or mezcal is the umbrella. And now because tequila is so unique, it lost that word of mezcal, but technically anything distilled from an agave is a mezcal. So we have the mezcal Durango, the mezcal Guerrero, the mezcal de tequila or just tequila. But this mezcal Durango is, um, so we use the cenizo agave, which is a wild harvested agave that is grown and that is um, harvested in the northern regions of the state of Durango in Mexico. And then the Guerrero uh, Clase Azul, which is distilled from the papalote agave, which again is another wild harvested agave, but that grows in a more uh, coastal and tropical climate in the uh, central western part of Mexico. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into some of my um, tasting, and I'll go, I'm gonna go ahead and give this an honest review. Again, considering the fact that a lot of uh, our opinions on the internet about Clase Azul is that this tequila is a tequila that is very sweet, that definitely has the influence of the Avocantes. But again, I'm a very open mind when it comes to tequila. I definitely do enjoy that more um, time-honored expression of tequila drinking. But let's go ahead and uh, try this very special Clase Azul. Mm -hmm. 